Welcome back and uh, happy to see that the uh, fiber, the uh, coaxial cables, the 5G, everything seems to be working because from one internet uh, uh, broadband company to another, if I'm doing that segue, we're here with Waystream and Frederick, the CEO, who will take us through the presentation. We will follow up with Q&A, but uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and nice to be here. Frederick Lambert is my name and the CEO of Waystream. Um, I would like to uh, uh, give you uh, a brief uh, introduction of Waystream, of course, a little bit about uh, the market, our financial situation, and the way forward. But I start with who we are. Um, okay. Um, uh, Waystream is a Swedish company listed on Nasdaq First North. We um, were founded in 2001 uh, and became our own company in 2012. Our main office is in Kista outside of Stockholm and we have uh, R&D in Stockholm, in India and in China where we also have an office. We have production in, in uh, both Sweden and in China. We are all in all 34 employees, including uh, consultants, and we are growing continuously. So what do we do? Uh, Waystream help city uh, networks and operators to build next generation high quality fiber to the X networks. Our products help, um, uh, they are adopted for the FTTA market and they help our customers to get higher capacity with less downtime. So what does that mean more in, in detail? Yes, we have a number of switches that we place out in the network or, or our customer does. We have a number of different series uh, dependent on how you build or how our, our customers build their products. We have layer two and layer three products. We also have different capacity and uh, variances of these. One gigabyte, gigabit and 10 gigabit uh, switches and so on. And, and uh, both fiber and copper products. So where is our products then used? Uh, with this picture, I'm trying to illustrate a little bit that our access switches are placed close to the end users. So they are uh, placed either in the basement of larger apartments or can be placed in those um, uh, small boxes that you see on the streets. Um, that, that's where we have our products. So when we say that our products are adopted for this, it means that they are supposed to be placed in a basement or in one of those connection boxes. So it can be dusty, it can be cold, it can be warm, and they have to run for 24-7 for the next 10 years. So that is what we mean with that. So what is, so where do our customers are and where are they placed? Oh. If we look all in all, I've taken Europe as an example. Um, here we have all in all about 80 uh, city net networks uh, across Europe. Uh, if we take that down, we have about 55 in the Nordics and 40 of them are in Sweden. And all of them are today active customers. This means that uh, they continuously buy and have our products in use. So our business model is you can, our customers can either buy when they update or change or if products uh, um, get broken, but most likely it's when they upgrade their networks or build new. But it's not a one-time purchase in that sense. You uh, buy continuously. If you buy, build new houses or if you upgrade, if you go back in time, uh, 10 years ago, uh, maybe you had 10 megabit and then you had 50 and then you 100 and now you have one gigabit at home. And then the operators or the city networks need to update their, their hardware. So all of our customers continuously buy from us. Um, so 
So, what is so? How does the market look like then? If we just uh, take um, uh, how it's been uh, lately, we've seen that, of course, Corona has really pushed us in a direction. From one day to another, um, customers need, couldn't go to the office anymore. They needed to work from home. So then, of course, the networks were used in a different way. At the same time, so that we see that consumer behavior, studying, working, uh, and everything around IoT. At the same time, EU has regulatory changes where they have the directives on where are we supposed to be. So, for example, EU has this digital agenda goals where they say gigabit for every household by 2030. Um, so the ambition is very high in, in this sense. So then how does it look like in the reality? Yeah. If we look at own in um, in EU, we have about 90, 99 million uh, connected households, and according to the FTTH Council, in five years it will go up to 197. So it's a, they will double the amount of connecting connected households. So we see that there is a growth potential in the market. If we then um, look into just a few of the markets that we are present in. Uh, we can take Germany as an example. They have about three and a half million households today, and they will in five years have 25 million. We take Netherlands from 1.9 to 3.7. Sweden has 3.1 to 3.4 million households. But we see that there is a growth in the market. There is, of course, other markets where we're present in, take Austria as an example, where they only have 140,000 connected households. And uh, uh, the plan is, of course, to grow that immensely. So we see that, uh, that the market is there. We see that our product has a good fit. So that is the, the positive from that sign. So uh, then come back a little bit. So how good are we doing in this market and in terms of our results? If we look on 2020, last year, uh, it was a record year for us. We had uh, uh, good growth and we had good cost control. Uh, we have been focusing on, uh, if we go back a couple of years, we had a, um, a product portfolio that was, we tried to go into more markets, but we decided to focus on the FTTH uh, market. And uh, so we built product only for this area. And what we could see that we got good growth and that we became very profitable. We came, so we 86 million in, in revenues and 15.1 million in EBIT, which is of course grow, uh, really good. If we then uh, look into the first nine months of uh, this year, we can see that it's been continuously stable, that uh, the first uh, uh, nine months we had 66.9 million in revenues, uh, which is a 5.1% growth, which is not that much. But we, on the other hand, became focused on the cost control. So the EBIT was 14.7. So what we see is that we have really worked on the profitability and, and the cash flow. At the same time, we've been increasing our uh, focus on the investments. So we have uh, grown the team and we increased um, um, investment in, in product development. So um, we, what we said is that it's important that we focus and that we get the, con get the company in control and that we are profitable and then we are able and uh, able to take the next steps. And then we come into um, our plans going forward. Uh, we have three focus areas um, where we uh, in our focus, it's profitable growth, and that's actually uh, all I'm going to fo uh, focus, go much more in depth. And then sustainability in terms of, of course, making sure that our products are sustainable, that our we have a good sustainability for our team, that we have a low turnover and so on. And of course, also gender 
equality that we get the 50 50 um, base but i will uh, i don't have time to go into those so i will focus on the profitable growth and uh, the finances i mean for us profitable growth is the base of what we want to do we want to grow in a profitable manner so we now have shown that we have stable finances we are profitable and now we can afford to take the next steps so what we are planning to do is that to increase our customer base it is by two things we have to leverage our strong position in the nordics and of course increase our focus on international sales and how do we do that yes we have a good ongoing partner network both in in the nordics and across europe but what we also have to do is increase our sales team we see that no one is as focused as we on to make sure that our products get out there so we are, are employed and have employed new salespeople in Sweden and still looking. We're also opening our first uh, sales office in, in Germany to employ people to push the market. Because what we can see is that when we have sales meetings, we get trials. And when we get trials, uh, we have customers that want to buy. So we have a very good conversion. As long as we get meetings, we have a very good result of it. So we believe that we can, um, that we can get results, both by broadening the customer base in Nordics, but also in Europe, Germany, but also in the countries uh, around Germany. Um, and then, of course, we are in a, in a business where product is needed. Uh, we need to make sure that we have products uh, so what we have done is that we have increased our investments in components and in production to make sure that we meet the demand. And the lead times are fairly long in general. So the decisions that we are taking now make effects 12, 15 months going forward. So if we, when we plan for uh, growth, we also have to produce for, uh, for it. So those are important aspects for us. So we invest in that sense. And then we have on the product side is that we are continuously increasing our investment in product development. What we want to do and what we are doing is that we're broadening our uh, product portfolio. Uh, with this is that we, we have a clear uh, ongoing dialogue with our customers what they need and what they want to use and we are ex looking into to broadening this um, so uh, what we are doing is that we are growing the team even here on the tech side to increase the pace uh, to get more products out uh, i can use an, as an example here when we actually have launched uh, a new product uh, just the other week we launched uh, our new uh, copper switch uh, where um, uh, we uh, now have um, availability and, and make it possible for our customer to upgrade their existing copper network in their households. It's easy to think that copper is a, an old technique, but for example in Sweden we started very early with our fiber uh, build out and at that time it was very expensive with the fiber in the ground. So what uh, what uh, companies, operators, and network city networks did was that they put the fiber in the ground and then they put Ethernet cables in the households. Uh, that technique now have uh, most uh, countries developed in a different way. Uh, so there are a few vendors that have these products. So what we have done is to uh, to create products for this segment, and we have a very good interest of this. So. Uh, that is one example of what we want to do. And so for the next uh, coming years, we plan to continuously make sure that we get new products out that complement our portfolio. And, but of course, that it com um, still focuses on the FTTH market or FTTX market. So that was uh, more or less what I had in my presentation today. Uh, so we can jump over to the Q&A. Excellent.
45 seconds to go, well presented. And uh, I guess um, Waystream uh, is some kind of way of working also because uh, um, increasing, um, uh, increasing uh, sales quickly in the Nordics, increasing EBITDA quickly. We're talking about 81% increase in sales outside Nordic. Uh, we're talking EBITDA increased 51% 2020 compared to uh, 2019. Are you planning um, to continue the expansion uh, in similar fashion in markets outside the Nordics? And when it comes to EBITDA, what can you say about the future growth opportunities there? I mean, yes, we see that it's very important to, to continuously grow and look into new more, more markets. We see the potential in the Nordics, but we also see, as I tried to explain there with the market development, there is a lot of things happening. So we are increasing our sales focus. We want to put in the next gear, so to speak, and to, to do it. But at the same time, it, we will not do it uh, in other way than that it has to be profitable. We have to make sure that we sell at reasonable prices, that we our premium products, that we uh, get the value for it. So we will continuously grow, but we will not uh, sell ourselves in that sense. So we, that is a good, important mix. Yeah. So uh, it's a niche segment, first in class uh, products, um, continuously uh, growing with a profit, mm -hmm. Sustainability, gender equality, uh, Im impressive three uh, pillars to stand up on, so to say. Could you elaborate a little bit about the cur current R&D operations and how will you continue to provide other first-in-class products? Will that be possible? What elaborate? Yes, I mean we have uh, we have built uh, a strong team um, in the main part is in, in Sweden, but with the people in China and India. Um, we have a, a really close dialogue with customers to make sure that, that we build what they want them and how they are planning to build in the future. At the same time, we are uh, um, joining um, uh, these uh, European um, um, the research. Uh, research um, uh, the uh, projects where a lot of different um, projects, 30, 40 companies and uh, research uh, development are looking into how can we, where are the networks going in the future. So uh, those uh, things are make sure that we are on the forefront of, of our market and uh, uh, make sure that we d we c take the products we have, make sure that we go in the right direction and develop in the right way. We don't think it's uh, the right thing for us is to revolutionary uh, the market. I mean, small development and uh, make sure that uh, our customers understand our products, know why they need it, and make sure that we can deliver upon it. Very well. So look, uh, looking at those opportunities, what would you say are the biggest ones in short and long term? I mean, for us, it's uh, to make sure that we see that the, the market is there. We need to meet the customers. We need to make sure that we take advantage of uh, the mix of our portfolio and that the, the opportunities are out there. So what we are doing is that uh, we increase the sales team. We make sure that, um, uh, that customers understand our values and what, um, what we can deliver. And I believe that we will that will support us both in the short and in the long term. All right. So last question. Um, when it comes to already completed uh, projects in the Nordics, mm -hmm. um, you have obviously been successful, mm -hmm. but what, uh, I mean, how is the team looking to grow and expand in this region and what may it look like in the future? No, but if we take uh, Sweden only as an example, we have 40 out of 160 set city networks. So uh, with that, we know that there are upgrades, that are, there are changes. So I see that the, it's for us to make sure that when they are looking into new services and new products, that we need to be there. So that's why we increase the sales team to make sure that we are not satisfied for 40 customers. We want more. Uh, and uh, because we have a very, very positive um, um, Customers are very satisfied. We have a really low turnover in that sense. 
So when they get uh, and start using our products, uh, they stick with it. I mean, we have customers that have products that are, have been in the network for 15 years. Think of that the return on investment. That's a, that's a great way to end things yeah. on with a good return on investment, uh, with a great retention and uh, potential upsells uh, once you already have completed orders. So yeah. with that, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, thank you everyone for listening.